Wondering what I use to take action figure photos? Well, uh, stick around and, uh, I'll tell you. Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Photo Dave, and this is Toy Picks, a channel dedicated to helping you and helping me get a whole lot better at our action figure photography. So if that sounds cool to you, go ahead and click subscribe while I describe what's going on in this video. Folks, I've gotten several requests asking me, hey, what do you use to take your pictures? So, very simply, I'm just going to talk about all the camera equipment that I have and that I use for this stuff. So, without further ado... Let's get to it. Okay, let's be real here. It's an action figure photography channel, so of course I'm going to have a few action figures in the background. But what I really want to say before we really get cracking is that you don't need to have a ton of money or spend a ton of money to really try your hand at action figure photography to see if it's something you want to do. Now, if you're a wedding photographer, first off, you have my pity. But secondly, that's when you're going to need to go out and you're going to need to get the most high-end stuff. You're going to need the stuff with the best resolution. You're going to be needing all kinds of lenses and all kinds of different light setups and reflectors. You're going to need just tons of stuff. That's when you spend a lot of money and it better be your business because it's going to take a while to pay it all off. But when you're just making this your hobby, you don't need to do that, and I'm going to show you the stuff I use. I don't think I use anything besides the iPhone I'm recording on right now that is even being made currently. So let's get cracking with this first item. This is an adapter for a compact flash disc. Yes, it's a sand disc. But it is old. The camera that I use is from 2005 or 2006, something like that. So it was using a huge card. And the slot that the light's on right now is the SanDisk card. So that's good size. So yeah, you've got an old school adapter here that fits an old school card. 16, let's see, 16 gig. That, that's pretty big for way back when. So you've got that, but you can see it's a good size card. So you plug this into the adapter, and then you take the end of the adapter, and fortunately it's a USB plug, which we're still using. So you plug that in, and you're good to go with the photos you took that ended up on this compact flash drive. Now, let's get into some lenses. And here we go. This first lens is just your standard 18 to 55 millimeter. It has an EFS mount, which that just means you look for cameras that have that same mount, and that way you'll know that this lens fits with it. It came with the camera that I use, which is a Canon EOS 20D. I'll show that off here a little later. This kind of lens, even though it's a really standard lens and it just comes with a lot of the camera stuff, it is really good for action stuff and angle stuff. If any of you have ever read How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, you'll know that they use a lot of angles and they use a lot of kind of extreme foreshortening and really action-oriented stuff. And when it comes to those kinds of shots, this actually I find to be the best lens for it, which is crazy. Now, I don't have a ma macro lens or a fisheye lens, so a macro might do even crazier. But this one, for something that just comes with most cameras, this bad boy gets a lot done when you're talking about action shots and those classic comic book looks from How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. All right. Next. Now this is the other lens I use. It is a 75 to 300 millimeter telephoto lens. And what it's best used for is if you see shots from, say, a football game where somebody takes a picture of a player catching the football and the background is all totally blurry, that's really what these work really well for. But when it comes to action figure photography, what they work well for is kind of bringing in the background, making the background a larger percentage of the picture. It's also really good for the whole posing kind of shots. So if you have a group of the X-Men, say, and they're just kind of standing there looking cool, 
with a blurry background, this is the kind of shot you want to use, or the kind of lens that I use anyway. It's not the one that you use for a lot of action, unless you want things to look kind of... I guess they'll look a little flat for the most part. One of the nice things you can do with the, with the last lens that you can't really do with this one is take things at a lot of different angles. This one, everything's always going to look a little more straight on unless you've got like some kind of lift or a big ladder you can stand on to set this up. But for the most part, I think we're usually taking pictures kind of at the edge of our tables and things like that. And when we're doing that and we want to show action, you want to show or you want to use the other lens. But when you're making sure that everybody's just standing there looking awesome, kind of like those old school Jim Lee pictures from X-Men or whatever else he's done, this is the kind of lens that really does well. And I'll be sure that I'm posting pictures that go well with each lens while I'm talking about them. Because, hey, that's probably pretty helpful to see examples of how they work. And now, let's get to the shutter release. And here we have a corded shutter release. That's right, friends, no wireless with this old school technology. All it is, is you set it up, you put the camera on the tripod, and you hit this button to take the picture, that way you're not risking the whole thing shaking while you try and take it with your hand. Even on a tripod, sometimes you can get just enough shake where things don't work out so well. And this is the end that just plugs into my camera. So, no big deal, but it's corded. And I know today a lot of people would much rather have things that aren't corded, that are, you know, wireless. And that's okay. Until, uh... Until I make some money with toy picks, I'll probably be using this bad boy. It served me well. I will say at one point I broke one of these and I ended up getting a generic one. The generic one literally lasted one shot and died. So I decided, okay, no more generics here. I've got to go back and get the real deal. So your mileage may vary. Maybe that was just a one-off thing, but a shutter release to me is too important to go and take another gamble on something generic when the first one just didn't work at all. So now, finally, with all that said, let's get to the camera. And folks, here it is, the Canon EOS 20D. I probably got this. I believe I started working with it in 2006. So I don't know... <laughs> I don't know if it was manufactured before that or what the deal was. What I do know is that its pixel size when it shoots is 3504 by 2336 pixels. And so what that means is usually print size is 300 dpi. So you would get roughly a 10 by 8 inch print if you were to just shoot this, leave it at 300 dpi, and print it up. Now, a lot of times, things that are blown up are more like 100 dpi, so you'd come awfully close to a 36 by 24 inch poster. So that's what I mean by you don't need the latest stuff, although the latest stuff is going to have larger pixel dimensions. So let's see, things on here you might not enjoy. Things that aren't necessarily ultra-modern are... I gotta get this out of the way so I don't knock things over. That's a really small viewfinder. Ooh, hey, look, it's me. But it's a tiny viewfinder. You still kind of look through here to see what's going on with the picture. Let's see. It doesn't... There's no fold-out, anything like that. So when you're setting up the picture, you don't see the photo on the back here. So those are the things that this is kind of missing for the most part. And it's a DSLR camera, so it's a good camera, but it's just not the latest technology because, again, 2005, 2006. It's an old one, but it definitely gets the job done when it comes to action figure photos. Like I say, when I go a little more nuts, when Toy Picks is making money and I start doing this a lot more, I'm going to upgrade, but for now, this thing is suiting me just fine. Here's another look. That's the, that's actually the lens that comes with it, which is the first one that I showed off. But yeah, nothing too fancy. Fancy at the time, but today, you don't have to spend a ton of money to load up on a Canon EOS 20D.
And that's it for this one, ladies and gents. Comment below and let me know, was this video helpful to you? Would you like to see more videos like it in the future? If enough people dig it, I'll make sure and record more just like it. So with all that said, I'll be sure to leave product links in the video description below. Those will be eBay affiliate links. Now what the affiliate part means is if you purchase something on eBay, I'll get a commission at no extra charge to you. But the reason I'm doing this on eBay, like I said, this is all a lot older equipment. This is not the new stuff. So it's probably one of the better places you can try and find it. Now, with that said, Thanks a ton for watching. It's always hugely appreciated. Thanks for subscribing, commenting, liking, all the stuff you guys do to support this channel. I couldn't do it without you, and I'm really enjoying the ride, partially because of you, and partially because I just dig doing that stuff. So, with all that said, and until next time, have fun, and happy snapping. See ya.